I recently advertised my book on a billboard in Times Square. And it was cheaper than you think. It was up for less time than you might expect, but it's still paying dividends. This is Love Your Work, and I'm David Cadavy. Times Square is, of course, the epitome of mainstream success. The biggest brands have locations there. Any big brand you can name advertises there. 350,000 people walk through Times Square on a typical day. It's also one of the most photographed places on Earth, with many of those photos and videos being shared on television shows such as Good Morning America and on TikTok or Instagram. So when my friend Robbie Abed told me you can advertise in Times Square for cheap, I knew I had to run an ad for mind management, not time management. I mean, a book about a new approach to time management in a city obsessed with time management in a place with time right in the name. I mean, it seemed like a match made in heaven. So the very thought of my lowly self-published book advertised on the front of Forever 21, above Sunglass Hut, across from the Disney store, next to McDonald's, in Times Square, that idea just made me laugh, the maniacal laughter of an evil villain plotting to take over the world in some Disney movie, of course. Before I explain how I advertised in Times Square for cheap, I'm sure some of you are thinking, Will advertising on a billboard sell books? And you're right to think that since people are walking or driving through Times Square, even if they noticed my billboard in this place that is nearly all billboards, they're not going to stop what they're doing, take out their phones and order my book on Amazon. But that's not the point. By advertising my book in Times Square, I was creating a pseudo event. I talked about pseudo events in my summary of Daniel J. Borston's The Image on episode 257. A pseudo event is a reality that's constructed just so it can be covered in media. And by being covered in media, the constructed reality becomes reality. Pseudo events can be funny or horrifying, they can be based upon truth or lies. But our media is full of them. Most leaks you see, every talk show interview, every planned event, they're all pseudo-events. Instagram is one pseudo-event after another. Reality is constructed for media and media constructs our reality. So my book really was advertised in Times Square. My self-published book really is a big deal thanks to the pseudo-event. So people want to know, How much does it cost to advertise your book in Times Square? Some people guess $5,000. Some guess $20. I advertised my book on a Times Square billboard with Blip Billboards. Blip is a platform that lets you buy short displays of an ad on electronic billboards across the U.S. Each blip lasts 15 seconds. I paid about $0.09 per blip in tests I ran in Chicago and had a blip run in Times Square for as little as $20. As little as $20, you might ask? I will get into my exact costs in a bit, but first, was my pseudo-event worth it? Here are some of my wins from this 15-second ad so far. A retweet from Tim Ferriss, a speaking appearance at the New York Public Library, and some more. A little bit more about each of these. My first big win from my Times Square billboard was a retweet from Tim Ferriss. So Tim Ferriss asks his podcast guests, what message would they advertise to the world? Now, I've always thought if I were asked that question, my answer would be the title of my book, Mind Management, Not Time Management. So I made sure one of my billboards was as plain as possible. It just said, Mind Management, Not Time Management. And then I shared a video of the billboard on Twitter, making sure to tag Tim, whom, by the way, I have never met nor talked to. We're not buddies or something. And you can see that tweet in the article for this episode over on Cadavy.net. Now, it was a long shot, but it worked. Tim retweeted it. And Tim has 1.8 million followers. 
people who would generally be interested in my books. I did see a decent spike in sales. Hard to know if this was the cause, but I didn't have competing promotions going on at the time. My second win was speaking for the New York Public Library. When I emailed my readers to let them know my book was advertised in Times Square, it turned out one reader organizes events for the New York Public Library. And this reader was excited to hear about my book being advertised in Times Square, and this prompted them to invite me to speak over Zoom to the library's audience. So they promoted this event to their email list of 1 million subscribers. And the day before the event, my new friend there informed me that, one, the NYPL stocked all of my books in paper ebook and audiobook formats. Two, my event was featured on NYPL's homepage. And three, my book was selected as the NYPL Business Center's Book of the Month. And the video of my speaking event is now listed on the library's CEO series page, along with talks by Marie Forleo, Seth Godin, and AJ Jacobs. I also got a couple links to my website from nypl.org, which are high-authority links which boost my site in search rankings. My third win is that some of my advertising paid for itself, and I don't mean through the book sales. If you sign up for Blip at kdv.co slash blip, you'll get $25 free advertising credit. Now, some people have already used that link, and apparently they spent enough for me to also earn a couple $50 credits, which reduced the price of my ads. My Times Square ad came and went in a flash, but it continues to pay dividends that I can't possibly predict. For example, in May, I was telling someone at a conference in Phoenix about advertising in Times Square, and it turned out they had already seen one of my posts about it. There's no telling who is listening to this podcast and what effect it will have on them. Like I talked about in episode 280, hidden complexity makes simple actions very powerful. And also fun pseudo-events like this, they breed positive black swans. A pseudo-event lasts a moment, but it lives on forever. A Times Square ad lasts a moment, but the photo, the video, the story lasts forever. So I advertised on a Times Square billboard for as little as $20, but what did this all really cost in the end? Here is the exact breakdown. First, there was the Chicago test campaign. That was $65.58. I ran some test campaigns in Chicago to get familiar with the system. Next was the Times Square campaign. I spent a total of $290 on advertising in Times Square. I ran a small test, got impressions for as little as $20, but then increased my bids and budget to be sure the ad would run during a given time block. Next, there was the photographer, which was $200. I got referred to a photographer from my friend Robbie Abed, who had found them on Craigslist. I hired them for the one hour my ads were scheduled to run. Then there were the blip referral credits, which took $100 off my bill. A couple people must have used my referral link at kdv.co slash blip and spent enough for me to get $50 in credits each. So the total cost of this entire campaign, $455.58. This was a really fun campaign, and though the ROI isn't as clear as the Amazon ads that I talk about in my income reports, I do think that it's safe to say it has been paying off and still is. Thank you for having me on your podcast. Thank you to On Abdi for having me on Book Talk today. One thing I've learned in over a decade as an independent creator is to invest in ideas. They really are everything. Most of them don't work out, but the ones that do can be big. I had one idea that led to a book deal and transformed my life. I had another idea that connected me with a company that later sold to Google, which brought a surprise payday. Big ideas start small, and the place I share my ideas first is my weekly newsletter. It's called Love Mondays, and each week I share a big little idea about how to break through to become a true original and make it as a creator. I also share my favorite quotes and books and tools for thought. Think of Love Mondays as like a shot of creative fuel to start off your week. There's several thousand subscribers. We're having a good time. Join Love Mondays at kdv.co slash newsletter. That's kdv.co slash newsletter. You might have noticed I don't have ads on Love Your Work. 
I haven't had them for a long time now. In fact, a big company whose name you would definitely recognize offered me money to advertise in this show recently, and I had to turn it down. Why? Because some money feels good, some money feels not as good. When I see that somebody bought one of my books, that feels good. When a company advertises on the show, I mean, it's money, but that doesn't feel quite as good. Another kind of money that feels really good is the money I get from my Patreon supporters. It feels like an honest exchange. It's a vote of confidence that they like the show. Since I myself support a number of creators on Patreon, I know it feels good to vote with my dollars and support the kind of work I would like to see in the world. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Make the kind of podcast I want to listen to and share the ideas I want to see in the world. So if you like the show, a great way to let me know is to support the show on Patreon. Even a few bucks a month helps. It really adds up over all the dedicated listeners, and it motivates me to keep doing what I'm doing. If you'd like to support the show, visit the Patreon page at patreon.com slash cadavy. You'll see the different levels and perks available. Even if you're on the fence, check out the page. Again, it's at patreon.com slash cadavy. That's patreon.com slash cadavy. Thanks for your support. Love Your Work is brought to you exclusively by our Patreon supporters, including top supporters Jeffrey Mason and Bob Rosen. The theme music for Love Your Work is At Sea by Dorena from the album About Everything and More by arrangement with Deep Elm Records at deepelm.com. Love Your Work is a production of Cadaby Inc.